Hello everybody, today I want to show you a game from the Lone Pine Open in 1981 between a player named Cameron Shirazi, who some of you might know about, very dangerous attacking uh, player and uh, with the white pieces and with the black pieces, none other than the uh, great um, Lev Albert, who is a, a lifetime proponent of the Alicon's defense uh, system. So this game started off E4, Knight F6, of course. Shirazi played E5, Knight D5, and then C4. The uh, two pawns attack in the Alicon's uh, defense, or in some circles known as the chase variation after Knight B6, C5, because of uh, uh, its aggressive nature and chasing uh, the Knight. Uh, all around the board so this looks kind of funny because it seems like you're doing exactly what blacks want black wants you to do is overextend yourself uh, in the center by pushing the f pawns forward after c4 c5 you give uh, uh black the d5 square uh right away but it's not all that simple white can obtain dangerous attacking prospects um but often White will have to play a sacrificial type of game where he's giving up a pawn. Sometimes he'll sacrifice a piece. But if you're a tactical uh, player and you like wild games, this is definitely um, a line you should pick up against the Alakon's defense. Because I know as a longtime Alakon player that uh, this line can be uh, very annoying at times because not because it's super dangerous, but because it's a rare guest. So you might not be as you know sharp or prepared to go into it. Uh, if you're playing the Alakon's defense, you're spending more time worried about the exchange variation, the modern variation, right? Those are uh, more critical. So this something just being real aggressive, putting a lot of pressure uh, right away. Uh, this uh, kind of system is nice if you don't have a lot of time to study, but you want something. Uh, with uh, some bite to it and you also have the potential to uh, uh, defeat somebody uh, very uh, early in this game so here of course Albert uh, took up the challenge and uh, played knight d5 bishop c4 was played um, other options of course a knight c3 right, all natural uh, looking uh, continuations so bishop c4 was played, attacking the knight right away. And Albert played uh, c6 here. Which is perfectly uh, normal. e6 is also a normal move. Notice how e6 allows the bishop to come out and attack uh, the c-pawn. And uh, oftentimes there are gambits associated with this move. You know, for instance, instead of playing a move like d4, sometimes this knight f3 is played and then d4 after the uh, capture. So, for example, knight f3, bishop takes c4, excuse me, uh, c5, and then d4. Um, other continuations, let's see here. Um... So C6 was played uh, in the game. Um, Shirazi continued with Queen E2. D6. Now, again, it's important to start to try to tear down this structure immediately. So you see B6 a lot. Um, one of the ideas um, behind Queen E2 also is that after a move like B6... Many times, many times, uh, white will like, uh, excuse me, black will like to trade off this bishop by playing bishop a6. So here it's a little bit more difficult. You know, white, black would have to play, say, like a5 and then go in for that if he was going to trade off bishops. Of course, queen e2 two also has this idea of making it very difficult for black to play d6 because of just exchanging and then you can exchange with the pawn so it has a very uh, deleterious effect on the black position a uh, black has to play play very carefully knight c3 albert takes 
Knight takes c3. I'm suspicious of this move just because it just gives, um, it accelerates uh, White's development in this position. So more to the point is a move like e6. Right, strong pointing uh, d5 or playing this b takes c5 here. Knight takes c3 um, gets rid of all of Black's development here and opens up lines for white which is what he wants now here's the game that you're playing is black the position is closed so as long as the position stays relatively closed okay you don't really have to you know worry about the development too much because the opponent can't get to you but white knows that too so of course white being ahead in development is going to try to uh, open up the position so here albert plays b takes c5 so he you know, it goes up material, the position's closed, and he figures, hey, maybe I can uh, consolidate this position. All right? So you have two opposing philosophies here. Albert feels he's safe, and it's up to Shirazi to prove that he's not. So knight f3, because at the end of the day, a lead in development doesn't mean anything if you can't uh, open up the position. So e6. And now Shirazi plays this move, knight g5. All right, so he's already uh, starting to attack here. Now, there's all kind of ideas. For instance, knight coming to e4, settling in on um, uh, d6, cramping the position. Of course, you have these type of ideas. Also, queen h5 with ideas of challenging here. And what winds up happening is you get more weaknesses on the uh, king side and once this f6 square is weak then again knight e4 is real strong and has options of coming here or here of course white will strive to trade off this bishop so ideas like knight e4 bishop g5 etc so what albert does here to try to mitigate this is he plays f5 of course black doesn't want to um Excuse me, of course, white doesn't want to just take en passant. That would, like, kind of cramp his style a little bit, although he would still be slightly better. So f5, you know, prevents this idea of knight e4. And also, this move d5 also is, is no good because after e takes d6, black's pawn structure is uh, really bad after bishop takes d6. All right? It's not a, a winning uh, pawn structure there. It's a... Uh, you know, it's the kind of pawn structure that you get ground down in 50 moves. So he plays f5. So Rizzi keeps going. Plays bishop f4. Again, Albert is doing a great, uh, a good, a great, a uh, great job of keeping the position relatively closed. Bishop e7. And now h4. So he's saying, hey, you take this uh, knight, you know, I'm going to either replace it with the bishop or I'm going to open up the h file. Queen a5. And now g4. So now we see uh, the storming of the uh, king side now. h6. And now I'm assuming that uh, Albert probably overlooked Black's next move, excuse me, White's next move, and was probably expecting a move like Knight H3. Um, just coming back here, which many of you might have played. That's good for White, of course. But, um, yeah, just Knight H3. Um, because if knight f3, then um, just simply f takes g4. And then knight d2. And then black can play moves like h5. Again, keeping the position closed. And uh, slowly stamping out white's initiative. Um, again, you got to understand. Again, look at these pawns on the light squares. So blacks, one of black's ideas is just to play this bishop here. Okay, because the queen is here on a5. Knight is here. And black... Would love to trade these bi this, these bishops right now. So this is why, after Queen A5, 
uh, Shiraji realizes, hey, it's time to uh, attack um, here. So he plays g4, h6, and then he goes for it. Knight takes e6. Powerful move because either Shiraji is crazy or he's correct. Because after all, the pawn is protected by another pawn and the bishop is behind it. All right. So knight takes e6, d takes e6, g takes f5, and all of a sudden, the position uh, starts to open up. Here, Albert plays h5. He doesn't want to castle over in the king's side because of the open uh, files over there, but that might have been uh, his best move there. But hey, after king, after uh, castle's queen side, f6 is, is rough. So I don't even think um, black has survived that he plays h5 okay again desperately trying to keep things calm in the position right so now he's just trying to hold on he has a, he's up a piece but he needs to consolidate rook g1 king f8 so now the king is over toward the uh, king side F takes e6, and finally, bishop a6, but now it's too late. Okay, the position has opened up with the king uh, in the middle of the board. Notice, white's king is in the middle of the board too, but the difference is, is white's king, uh, white has his forces out. Okay, black is behind the eight ball here. After bishop a6, bishop g5, bishop takes g5. Rook takes g5. And now. Queen c7. Was played. And. Bishop takes a6. Knight takes a6. And white would just play castle. This is, this is not what happened but. After queen c7, Shirazi didn't even bother to capture this piece. Shirazi just castled, right? Just kept, just kept pouring, pouring on the, uh, you know, the the uh, the gasoline onto the fire. Bishop takes e4, queen takes e4, king e8, and queen d3, and uh, Lev Albert. Uh, resign. There's no way to stop this idea of Queen G6. If Rook H6 here, then just simply Rook takes G7, which kind of distracts the Queen. So, and then you will have mate there. So, devastating game in the. Uh, two pawns attack or chase variation but the general principle that we want to take away with this game is that lead and development is very important as most of you all know however you must open up the you must strive to open up the position and so from this position after move 10 um black wasn't in you know grave danger here so as I said in the beginning, this is the type of opening where you have to be willing to sacrifice a pawn or sometimes a piece uh, to open up the position. But again, the general theme is that if you're ahead in development, that's not enough. You got to make sure that, that you get that position open at all costs. And if you're on the other side of the equation, you got to try to keep that position closed at all costs. And of course, um, Lev Albert being a grand master, he did, you know, he did that. I think Shiraji's uh, just an international master. I don't, I don't know if he ever made grand master, but the, you know, so obviously Lev Albert, you know, being a student of the Russian chess school knew, okay, I need to keep the position closed here, but Hey, um, Shiraji, you know, very great tactical mind, uh, you know, found a move that um, I'm sure Albert overlooked with knight takes e6. If he forces black to uh, white to play knight h3, everything is fine. But he knew that, hey, I need to open this position up at all costs. He has his bishops placed um, on c4 and f4. But look, everything's clogged up. And 
and he realizes this is the moment in the game. And from there, the floodgates start open. And notice all the pieces, you know, just start getting on open files, open diagonals, etc. And just like that, uh, in a few moves, all hell breaks loose. So look at, again, in this position, look at white's pieces and look at black's pieces. And even though black is technically a piece up, uh, he is dead lost. There's nothing he can do. He can't even develop the, his knight safely uh, without being captured. All right. So that is it for today's uh, lesson. I hope you enjoyed that game. Please um, support my channel in the links below and donate if you can. And um, uh, comments and suggestions are welcome. And also um, check the links below for DVD slash books. Uh, I always uh, put links up um, related to whatever opening that appears on the board. So in this case, it's the Alicon's Defense. So if you're interested in learning it, um, you know, check those uh, links below also. And I'll see you guys on the next video.